This lesson um, is an introduction to naming organic compounds. You should have your notes with you and you'll find um, this particular section uh, on page 8 in your notes. It's section 5 titled Naming Organic Compounds. There are millions and millions of organic compounds in the world and uh, naming all of them is not an easy job. And today we're going to just start along the road of understanding how one goes about naming all these millions of different compounds. A systematic method for naming has been developed. It was developed by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. Um, the acronym there is IUPAC, which uh, um, is the name that we give to uh, the way in which we name organic compounds. So we'll talk about the IUPAC name of a particular compound. So every organic compound that we come across will have a systematic IUPAC name. Many of them also have um, more common names. And so, for instance, um, the organic compound that we know as acetone, uh, which is a key ingredient in nail varnish remover, um, is more uh, formally known, according to its IUPAC name, as propanone, uh, which is a ketone, but uh, most people simply call it acetone. Let's think a little bit about how we uh, deal with naming all the people in the world. If, uh, if we consider that there are over 6 billion people in the world, how do we get around the problem of naming each and every person in the world? Well, of course, we have also developed a system, and our system revolves quite simply around breaking those people up into individual families. And uh, so if we take one particular family, uh, let's consider this family over here, um, they might all have the surname, uh, let's say, Jackson. And, uh, and so every member of that particular family has the surname of Jackson, and that defines the particular family. But uh, each individual member of that family then has a first name, and, uh, and so the one might be um, called Ken. And Ken then, let's uh, imagine that's Ken over there, uh, Ken comes from the family called Jackson, um, but he is uniquely identified within that family by his first name, Ken. And in that way, each person in the world has a specific name, a surname which obviously defines the family that they belong to, and a first name that defines them as a unique member of that family. Now, at a very simplistic level, that's exactly how organic compounds are named. So we can think of every organic compound as having a surname. And that surname defines the family that it belongs to. Um, and of course, as we uh, learned a little earlier, uh, that family is called a homologous series. And so organic compounds are broken up into different homologous series, the alkanes, uh, the alcohols, carboxylic acids, etc. And so each organic compound um, has a surname which defines its homologous series and then it has a first name which distinguishes it as a unique member of that homologous series. And the first name um, is derived by counting the number of carbon atoms number of carbon atoms in that particular um, compound. And so at a very simplistic level, organic compounds are named uh, with a first name, which refers to the number of carbon atoms, and then a surname, which refers to the homologous series that it belongs to. So let's take an example. Here we have a very common compound. Um, hopefully you'll be able to identify that it has got carbon atoms uh, bonded by single bonds, and so it belongs to the alkane homologous series, which means that the uh, ending of this particular name, or the surname, is A-N-E, because the compound is an alkane. If we then consider its first name, you'll notice that there are one, two, three carbon atoms in the chain. And uh, the prefix that we use to indicate three carbon atoms is the prefix prop. 
And so this compound that we have here has a first name of prop and a surname of ane, and so it is just called propane. And of course, I'm sure you've heard of propane. Um, it's the gas that we use sometimes for cooking. All right, let's have a look at a second example then. Um, the functional group there, the OH functional group, tells us that it comes from the homologous series of the alcohols. And uh, the suffix for that is anol. And uh, then we look at the first name. We count carbons. There are two carbons in the chain. And the prefix for two carbons is F. And so this compound would be named ethanol, ethanol, which is the constituent in all alcoholic drinks. So there we go. At a very simple level, we identify the homologous series, and that tells us the surname. We identify the number of carbon atoms in the chain. That tells us our first name, and we put the two together. To name organic compounds, then, one has to know uh, the prefix, which tells us how many carbon atoms, and the suffix, which tells us uh, which homologous series it belongs to. And we've already been through the uh, suffixes, and you filled them in on the table in page on page 7 in your notes, so you might need to refer back to that. But let's quickly look at the prefixes, and if you'll fill these in in your notes as we go along. If there is one carbon atom in the chain, then the prefix we use is meth. M -E -T -H. If there are two, we've already come across that one. That's F, as in ethanol. If there are three, then the prefix is prop, the one we came across earlier. If there is four, it is bute, B -U -T. If there is five, it's pent. And from now on, you will probably uh, recognize these uh, prefix because they relate to some of the mathematical uh, words you would have used. Six is hex, seven is hept, eight is oct, nine is non, and ten is dec. Now, we actually only need to go as far as 8 for our syllabus, but it's relatively useful to know 9 and 10. Um, beyond 10, again, there's a systematic way of, of naming, which you can uh, read up on about if, uh, if you're interested in. All right, so that now gives us our prefixes, 1 through 10. Our suffixes are on page 7 in your notes, so we have everything that we need. When it comes to learning these, and you really do need to just learn them off by heart, uh, I always found 5 through to 10 quite easy because they're related to some of the maths that we had done. Um, but these first four over here I always struggled with. And uh, when I was at school, my teacher taught me this little trick, and maybe it'll work for you. Um, I remember this rhyme, Mommy eats peanut butter. And then the first letter there, M, E, P, and B, relates to the prefixes of the first four, meth, eth, prop, and bute. So, mommy eats peanut butter, meth, eth, prop, bute, one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, four carbons. If that helps, then go ahead and use it. If not, simply learn them off by heart. All right, it's now time for uh, you to give it a go. Um, in your notes, um, you will find six organic compounds. And what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and uh, then have a go. Try and name each of them. Work out the first name, uh, which is the number of carbon atoms. Work out the second name or the surname, which is the homologous series. And try and write down the name for each of them. Once you've done that, then push play again and, uh, and you can check your answers. All right, let's have a look at the first one then. Um, there's a carbon-carbon double bond, which means that the uh, surname is Ene, from the alkene family, and there are three carbons, and so the, uh, the prefix would be prop for three carbons, and so the name of the first compound is propene. Go on to the second one. 
Uh, it has an OH group, which means it's a member of the alcohol family. So its surname is anol. There is simply one carbon atom, which means that its first name is meth. And so the name of that compound is methanol. Onto this one, there's the um, group of atoms uh, which make up the functional group. It's for a carboxylic acid. Um, there are two carbons in the chain, and so the first name is eth. And the carboxylic acid group's suffix is anoic acid. And so that compound is called eth anoic acid. Coming down here, there are three carbons in this chain. And so the uh, first name, again, is prop. There's the functional group there. And uh, it's a ketone functional group. And so the suffix is known. And so that compound is propanone. We spoke about that earlier. Its common name is acetone. This next compound has uh, got uh, carbon atoms, and they're all joined by single bonds, uh, which means it belongs to the alkane family. And so the surname or the suffix is "-ain". There are one, two, three, four carbon atoms. And so the first name is "-bute". And so this compound is "-butane". Again, don't be confused that they've drawn it um, at a right angle. Remember, these compounds are three-dimensional, and so it doesn't matter how they draw them as long as they are simply single bonds between the carbon atoms. And then finally, this compound at the end, uh, it has a C double bond O at the end of the chain, so it's an aldehyde. Uh, there are two carbon atoms, so its prefix is F, and because it's an aldehyde, its suffix is anul, and so the name of that compound is F-anol or ethanol.